Modweni. Hi guys. Um Ekamalam Gulwanda. I am a pharmacist. So today I want to speak about medical tests, medical exams, blood tests. Um yeah, or yeah, let's call it medical tests. So often, you know, I'll hear so I'll be asking an elderly lady and I ask do you have any chronic conditions? Do you suffer from high blood pressure, you know, cholesterol, anything of the sort? And they'll say, yeah, 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 they've been testing for everything and they couldn't find anything, so I'm clean, right? Or I'm speaking to a lady or a gent, you know, and I ask, specifically ladies, you know, did you, did, do you suspect that what you have is a sexually transmitted infection? And maybe, a common answer would be, no, I did a pap smear and it came out clean. So this means that I don't have any STIs. So correction here is that the pap smear is not an STI test. The pap smear is a smear, so a swab of the cervix. The cervix is the mouth of the uterus. So it's past, if you look at the anatomy, it's past the vagina, just where the uterus or the womb is supposed to start is the cervix. Umlomo was beleg. So in the Indi, umlomo was beleg. So we smear that area. So a doctor would do this or a nurse. And um, they would take that sample to a lab and ask a lab technician to test that there are no precancerous cells there. Um, so this is a prescribed test, you know, you can't do a pap smear and then the pap smear tells you about your genetics. The pap smear exam or the way the test is done, it will tell you exactly whether or not, you know, this person is likely to have cancer, uh, cervical cancer to be specific, whether there are any precancerous cells and that's what it does. So you can't use a pregnancy test and see whether the pregnancy test is going to tell you if you have HIV. You can't do a rapid test for COVID and then the COVID test tells you that you have um, um, prostate cancer. I'm making an example. So each specific device is linked to a specific test and each test is requested by a doctor, pharmacist, nurse um, specifically because there is something that they uh, <laughs> there's something that they are suspecting so because I suspect that you have high blood pressure I will check your blood pressure using a sphygmomanometer or a bomanometer that we're going to put on your arm and it's going to tell us and give us a blood pressure reading if I suspect that you have diabetes I will use a glucometer to check the amount of glucose in your blood at a specific point or I'll do an HB1AC test. Don't worry yourself about all these nitty gritties but specifically the take home here is that I am requesting a specific test that is done by a specific device and the results will only give me what is specific to to that test, right? Um, we have people that we call uh, phlebotomists. Phlebotomists are people who withdraw blood. Uh, this is called venipuncture from a vein. And this blood sample will be taken to a lab. So if we suspect you have TB, we could say we want you to cough up um, some sputum. we we'll put this in a bottle and we will send this to the lab because that's where we think the TB should, could be sitting. Okay, and um, these samples, it could be a blood sample, a sputum sample, it could be a tissue sample. It will go to the lab and it will be tested specifically for what the doctor requested. The test is done by an analyst at the lab. The analyst usually does not have medical knowledge. So the analyst will tell you just this is how much glucose is in the blood. I'm making an example. But the analyst doesn't necessarily know whether or not this means that you are diabetic because they don't know your medical history 
and they don't know whether this sample for blood glucose was taken as a fasting glucose or it was after you ate you know and all those kind of things is this person on treatment or not all they are testing for is what they were requested to test test for specific gravity test for viscosity test for you know dna um the interpretation of the test is then done by a doctor this means that even if you knew what test you needed to get and you went to a lab and requested the test the lab might not let you do that test because they only receive instruction from the doctor or they can do the test for you but they won't interpret it for you because they are not themselves medical doctors so this is why your results will then be given to a doctor and you will need to receive your results at the doctor's rooms. So we know that these could be x-rays, right? Because an x-ray is also a, an investigation or a medical test. The x-ray, ultrasound, um, you know, we even have things called endoscopy, um, hysteroscopy, um, many, many other different ways to investigate and to, to test, to come to a diagnosis, right, for the doctor. Um, I, you can check out a um, documentary of series. It's on Netflix. It's called Out for Blood um, in Silicon Valley. This woman, because she had a lot of money, ignored all the available science and just assumed that if you got a minimum amount of blood, you could use that one sample to test for 50, 100 other things, right? And there was gonna be an app for this. Uh, there was going to be a device that you just put this one sample in this device and it's going to tell you 100 different things about this person. However, science doesn't work that way and she failed miserably after spending millions or billions of money and, and uh, you know, pulling a lot of other people in her idea so yeah something maybe to check out and after watching it you'll maybe get to respect a lot of science and just understand that sometimes it's just a specific way that things work i want to tell you a short story about hiv positive member um, she is um, getting very thin you know doesn't eat has lost appetite that sort of thing and the clinic suspects that she has TB and then they test for TB. They just ask for a sputum sample. The sputum sample is sent to the lab. It comes back negative and they don't know what's wrong. She's just not getting any better. At some point I get involved and I take her to a hospital. At the hospital, the doctors also think she has TB, but they test for a different kind of TB. They test for TB of the stomach not pulmonary TB, meaning the, sam the sample is taken at a different place. They are no longer going to take a sputum sample. The test is done in a different way. And that test comes out positive and she starts treatment for TB of the stomach, which is the same treatment, but it's taken differently. And you know, she recovers and she recovers fully. This was probably your oh, give or take, you know, eight, 10 years ago. She's still alive today, you know, and uh, she thinks I saved her. I didn't, you know, <laughs> medical science did. Um, you just need to know what you are doing and s test for something specific, right? So you need to know what you're suspecting and then only you can order the test that will give you those results. Just because you have a sample, that sample could be tissue, it could be blood, it could be um, a swab, but the, the, the lab assistant still needs to be told what exactly to test for. And all of this needs to be linked to a diagnosis. And then that diagnosis needs to be linked to a, um, to a treatment. So yeah, that's the long and short of it. And I really hope that this makes sense to you somewhat. Um, and if it doesn't, you know who to ask. Ask Rwanda.
Cheers, guys. Have a good day.